guess who's back? It's time for Tough Topic Thursday, where we talk about some issue that bothers a lot of people. It may not be um, a widely discussed topic, but you know how I like to do things. I like to go in and go for the stuff that other people don't really usually talk about. A novel angle, a novel topic, the stuff that people avoid, or the stuff that people don't really have any thought about whatsoever. But, you know, I sit around and think up crazy stuff because that's just how I do things. But uh, welcome to the Debsterism channel. My name is Deborah Cooper. I'm an advice columnist here, author, dating expert. And uh, what we do on this channel is talk about self-empowerment, self-improvement, and betterment primarily for women. And, uh, you know, there's our videos here on this channel, which are, is going on, it's going to be going on 600 videos in a minute. We're over 500 and something now. And, uh, you know, I'm usually cranking out two, three or so a week. So it should be over 600 before too long. So as you can see, there's a lot to choose from. If you're looking for a particular topic, as you scroll through, I think YouTube only will show you so many in a scroll. You go to the top of where it says videos, click that, and then there'll be a little search button. Type in the keywords for whatever topic you're looking for, and you should find at least one video that addresses it. Because I have a lot to say, and I'll have a lot more to say as the years go on. But welcome to the show, everybody. Um, I want to approach tonight, we're going to talk about, uh, well, not even weddings so much. I, I'm going to touch on weddings, too, because I found some very interesting statistics about wedding that I want to share with you. But primarily, I want to talk about, okay, you know, we got all these single women here, right? And a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you know, I can't find anybody good enough to marry. You know, these dudes aren't husband material. They're this, they're that, they're useless, they're pieces of shit, they lie, they cheat. Okay, all these things. So then you find a woman who, you know, meets a dude and she wants to marry him. So then the issue becomes, the questions change, you know, the questions they just said to me. Well, you know, why won't he commit to me? This isn't going anywhere. You know, I want to I wanna get married. I don't want to have children out of wedlock. Like, this has always been my dream. I want to have my own family, this and that. Okay. Totally understandable. I get it. So then, you know, let's just say that, you know, dude is on that page and he proposes and now you flashing this ring on your hand to everybody, you know, hello, hi, how you doing, girl? You just wear people out with this damn ring. Some of you are so desperate for the ring, you will propose to the dude. I was watching some videos like that on YouTube, and I was just appalled. Who would do such a thing? I would never a, pro a proposed marriage to a guy. I don't recommend that. I don't know what they be thinking. But, uh, okay, so, you know, you get the ring. You know, you got the proposal. You are happy and stuff. And one of the first things people do then is start planning the wedding, right? They pick a date. They start looking at venues. They start thinking about what church they're going to get married or what destination they're going to have a wedding at. You know, they bride, she get her girls together. There's going to be her bridesmaids. And she just running around trying on bridal dresses and bride, what you call them, uh, bridesmaids dresses and look mother the bride dresses. And, you know, it's like all this pomp and circumstance surrounding a wedding, not to mention the expense. You got to get the DJ. You got to get a photographer. You got to get the flowers, you know. The caterer, the limos. I mean, it's just a lot of money. So what do you do when you got all that stuff arranged? You done paid all this money. Sometimes, you know, everything, because they make you pay a deposit. Sometimes it's paid in full. And then your dude decides that he don't want to get married. And that's, that's not what he want to do. The only problem is he doesn't really tell you. You know, I mean, he might tell you. I'm going to give you some examples of the ones that did. But he might just not, not show up. Just don't show up at the wedding. Now, what do you do in a situation like that? I was listening. I was looking at these stories and I was trying to, you know, put myself in these women's situation. Like, you know, how would I feel? You know, of course you feel devastated and embarrassed and all of that. But, um, you know, what? What do you do? What's your next step after that? I have some ideas. I'll be 
going over that with you too. This is kind of an odd topic to talk about because, you know, I don't really know why. I mean, I you don't have the stories, but it's like, don't these people know that they don't want to marry this person way before the last fucking minute? Okay, I just have to be blunt. I just, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm reading all these. It's like thousands of these stories online where people waited till like the day of the wedding or the night before, you know, they supposed to be there and they not there, that kind of stuff. And they just don't show up. You didn't know that this was a problem before that last minute. You had to wait until, you know, the clock was ticking and the music was playing and everybody was in the church waiting. You had to be like that dramatic. It's kind of unbelievable. Yeah, money, because you don't get that money back. You know, you don't get it. You don't get it back. And a lot of you have this idea, too, that you think that, okay, like even for the women who do know that there's some issues, right? There's there's some problems there. For some reason, you think that because you love him, though, and because you're going to be getting married, that once you get married, all these things are going to go poof up in a you know puff of smoke because you're married now. And you don't realize, you know, them problems come right along with you to the marriage that you had when you were still dating. They don't, they, nothing goes away just because you got married. Sometimes it gets worse. So, um, what'd she say? Perfect end to your night. Oh, well, good. Congratulations. That's always good news when here sisters be on their grind and something magical, something happens. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about why people, okay, this is what I'm going to have. On. We're going to talk about why people dip out on the wedding day, the tacky and the classy way to do the dipping, what you should do after an engagement is broken, and, uh, you know, how to move on, basically, how to, to let that go, because obviously that's going to be a problem. And uh, I think you guys should know, you know, I started reading some statistics on it. Do you know that it is estimated that a good 20% of marriages, I mean engagements rather, end up broken? Okay, and that's with the 40 to 45% divorce rate. So that what does that mean when you put that together? It means a whole bunch of people are together that shouldn't be. That's what that means. So you're looking at, you know, you add the 45, 50% divorce rate or whatever with that 20% of... Uh, of broken engagements that's a lot of folks who are making some very poor choices in what they think is going to be a partner at least the people who broke up before they got married you know i mean they won't have to go through the whole divorce process and all that because it really sucks i mean it's bad enough when you get married but then you got property to divide you know i got joint bills sometimes you got kids involved you know so it becomes a lot messier than if you do it when you're just you know dating and engaged but um, let's start, let's start by looking at some statistics on engagement. There's this wedding, this wedding, wedding website, that's kind of a tongue twister, called The Knot. Now, you know, usually I don't be shouting out sites, but they do a lot of work on statistics keeping up with statistics of engagements and marriages and marriage failures and venues and cost of weddings and all this kind of stuff. So I'm going to be sharing some of the stuff that I found with you. Okay, so they did this survey for 2018. They interviewed more than 14,000 <coughs> excuse me, 14,000 couples that got married in 2018. The new national average cost of a wedding, excluding honeymoons, is $33,931. Okay, don't you think if you spend anywhere near that kind of money that you ought to know that this person sucks way before you start spending it? I was shocked. And just remember, that's an average because in some other statistics I got from another website, you'll find that it varies from state to state. <clears throat> okay. Um, and it says, so where's all this money going? Couples are investing in super personalized events infused with meaningful details. And 29% hire a professional wedding planner to help them pull it off. 
Many wholeheartedly embrace or blend their cultural customs, while others intentionally turn tradition on its head by paying homage to pop culture. Harry Potter stilettings. Stilettos, anyone? Nixing old school activities like the garter toss or reinventing big moments to suit their individual uh, lifestyle, like tequila shots, I guess, instead of a kiss. So um, it looks like the reception venue is 15,000, photographer 2,600, wedding event planner 2,000, band $4,200, DJ $1,300, flowers $2,500, wedding dress $1,600, groom stuff $285, cake $600, ceremony venue $2,382. So that means even, you know, church or whatever. And I'm sure that, that does, that's not counting destination weddings because it's way more than that. And then they have favors, catering, $70 per person. The rehearsal dinner, $1,300. The engagement ring, $5,680. Invitations, $400. Hairstylist, $150. Makeup artist, $105. It says the bride's parents pay 44% of the overall wedding budget. Bride and groom contribute 43%. The groom's parents contribute about 12%. And then 12% of couples pay for the wedding entirely by themselves. You think that you can escape, right? If you just you don't have a wedding, but you get invited to the fucking wedding. As a wedding guest, they be knee deep in your wallet too. They did a survey on that. 1,300 people that was invited to weddings. The average members of the wedding party spent $300 each on wedding gifts for the bachelor and bachelorette, the wedding shower, and the wedding day itself, while getting wedding guests spent a similar almost $300. So now your friend that going to get dipped out on that invited you to be in her, you know, be in her wedding, and you out three dollars $400, and of course, in other cities like New York City, San Francisco, stuff, it's probably more like $800, $900, 1000 you out all this money for a wedding that never happened. Jay Boogie say I'm deceased. Shut up, fool. <laughs> Isn't this crazy? This is, I mean, I'm setting this up because, I mean, this is what you guys need. You know, people have this vision of, you know, this wonderful wedding and, you know, this whole thing happily ever after. And I want to put some reality parameters around it because at least one of the grooms left the bride on the altar because of the debt that she got them into behind the wedding. And so in order to, you know, I want to frame this for if you got a man who's very concerned about money, um, this kind of expense here is you've never been to a wedding, child. They, some of them are so fantabulous, you just be like, well, damn. I met, went to the wedding this girl. Her parents ordered her dress from Paris. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. But within three months, she was divorced. And this wedding dress cost, this was in 80s dollars, almost $10,000. Okay? They spent a grip on this wedding. So it says, unsurprisingly... Oh, 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 wait. For the wedding gave gift alone, the average guest spends $88.00. While the wedding members of the wedding party spent 107, and 34% of guests purchase a gift off the registry, and 29% give cash or a check in an envelope, and 10% give gift cards. Now, this becomes interesting because what do you do if somebody lives together? See, I ain't giving your ass shit. I just is me because you living together, you already have everything that you need. I'm just here for the party because you're already fucking. Most of you already got kids and shit. They already buying shit together. They living like a married couple. What the fuck am I giving you anything for? Shit, you need to be giving me something to come and watch this this travesty. Uh-uh, not doing that. And so the average wedding attendant will spend around the same amount of money on travel, $308 in accommodation, $212 as a wedding guest who has spent $300 and $230. So you see everybody, everybody is out of money on this situation where, you know, somebody dips and doesn't show up at the last fucking minute. These people have flown in. they in hotels. They had to buy outfits, get their hair done, all this stuff. Because to be at your wedding and show you this kind of love and then this stuff happens. So I'm putting this in a situation 
I mean, I'm trying to frame this so you guys can really think about, you know, as you decide who it is you're going to be marrying and what kind of wedding you're going to have, if you're going to have one, you can think about these kind of things. Because people don't usually think about what other people are spending to be there for them. They only think about themselves. And, you know, they buy the groom like the bride, get, you know, gets dipped out on by the groom. Well, the groom's family, her family, mad because all the money they spent. Well, what about every fucking body else? They spent you know, together. They spent as much as you did. So, you know, a couple of people asked me to be in their weddings, and I said, no, I don't want to unless you're buying all the shit. And I meant it. I'm not spending my money. I'm not doing that. Deb and her money just don't really like to be apart. <laughs> We're like Siamese twins joined at the hip. So let's see. Let's, let me give you a few more statistics. Top days to get engaged is remains Christmas, Christmas Day. For seven out, it's one of the it's the top um, day for uh, getting engaged, and most couples stay engaged for fourteen, an average of fourteen months. Um, how do people meet? Twenty three percent met through friends. Fifty five percent dated more than two years. Seventy two percent live together. Fifty four percent discussed finances. They say the average engagement ring is five grand. <coughs> that seems like a lot, but I guess not. Is that about a carrot? If you live in the areas of New York or San Francisco or Washington, D.C., okay, New York and the surrounding area, $50,000 is the average wedding cost. In San Francisco, Oakland, over here where I live, the average is forty grand. In Washington, D.C., thirty-nine. Boston, thirty-eight. So you see, you know, the more in Houston, damn, in Houston is thirty-three. So if you the cheapest place on here to get married is Cleveland, Ohio, twenty-two grand. Okay, so if you want to get married, go do it in Cleveland. Um. <clears throat> so those are some of the statistics I wanted to share with you about weddings and engagement. Now let's talk about divorce. Okay, so let's see you all happy, right? Because you made it down the aisle and you still flashing your ring. Now you got two rings, right? Because you got the engagement ring and they got the wedding band on and he got a ring on and you miss it so and so and you just wearing people out with that. I know a woman who has it on her work signature. Instead of her name, she says Mrs. whatever her husband's name is. She just want everybody to know her ass is married. It's unbelievable. All right, now, this is from a law firm that, that focuses on divorces, family law, they call themselves. The divorce statistics for first marriages, 42% of the marriages end in divorce. It gets worse the more you, times you get married. Second marriages, 60%. Third marriages, if you should be that dumb, 73% end in divorce. The average age of getting married is 30 the average number of years before that person gets remarried is three, and they, you know, a hundred divorces per hour in this country, and these these were 2012 statistics. This is unbelievable, unfreaking believable. The average length of the first marriage that ends is divorce that lasts eight years. They say, eight years. And by 10 years, it's 33% of people. And people. Average age for couples going through divorce is only 30 years old. So a lot of people, are, that means they're marrying a little bit too young. You know, they haven't finished growing up yet. So, you know, people will be like, well, why is she telling me all these statistics? These are important because as we move through the conversation, when I start sharing stories with you about why people left their uh, person at the altar, you can have some frame of reference for age, first marriage, second marriage, if, you know, they should say so. Um, you know, how much money was invested. You can, you'll have, like, it'll be, it'll be meaningful conversation to you. It won't just be some story that you hear. You'll be able to understand why some of these people made the choices that they made. Um, the states with the lowest divorce rates, Iowa, Illinois, Massachusetts, Texas, and Maryland. The states, five states with the highest, and the number one is Arkansas. Two is Nevada, which, of course, a lot of people go to Nevada to get divorced because it's real easy. They don't, not really residents, but they just go there, like to Las Vegas or something. So that's kind of skewed. 
Oklahoma, Wyoming, and Alaska. Those are the states with the five highest rates of divorce. Uh, what you call them, California is probably number six, but they didn't make it into the top five. So there you go. Huh. Now, on divorce. People are more likely to divorce the younger they were when they got married or moved in together. The more your coworkers are who are the opposite sex, the higher your risk of divorce. A lot of inner office, intra office affairs, I guess, huh? What increases the likelihood of divorce? Having friends, family members, or co workers who are recently divorced. Higher spending on both the engagement and the wedding has been linked to shorter marriage durations. Now that's interesting. Not marrying someone close to your own age also increases your risk of divorce. So um, this is something we probably, I'm probably going to pick that up on another show because those are some very interesting uh, numbers. All right, so let's talk a little bit now about what goes wrong. You know, what goes wrong? I mean, you go into the situation, you have such high hopes, you know, you really want it to work. You love this person. You know, you you know you read all the fairy stories as a little girl. You just think, you know, happily ever after. This is going to be wonderful. Um, I met the man of my dreams. Let's let's do this. You know, you start fantasizing about, you know, being old and rocking chairs together and all this kind of stuff. And then something goes wrong. So let's share some of these stories. Um this girl says that she called her with her her engagement because her fiance was way too controlling. We lived in separate towns. She did all the driving. She had to call him when she got home from work. He didn't like her having male friends. He even made negative comments about male celebrities. He overshared every aspect of our relationship with his father, and I was encouraged to talk it out with his father. Huh. Wow. So she said they broke up. When he showed up at her house, she let him have it. I went back to bed. Interesting. I went out for coffee and ran into an old high school friend I hadn't seen in years. We spent some time catching up and visiting. Off and on, several years later, I'm happily married to him now. See how that happened? Remember I tell you about my aunt talking about don't get rid of your yacht till your boat comes in and how the boat can't make it to the port because, uh, I mean, the yacht can't make it to the port because the boat's in the way? Dude was her boat. She got rid of him, and then her yacht was, you know, the port was available. She met him the same day. Okay, her yacht sailed in her direction the exact same day she got rid of that idiot. Um, this guy says that his ex broke up the relationship. They were engaged for a year and a half. Oh, I'm saying this is a woman. And then he met someone else and broke up with me. And she didn't eat for two days. She got drunk and all of that stuff. Oh, my God. Poor thing. He says it was a bad breakup. I called it off. I'm the male. I was about to get married to. And he says I'm now about to get married to the real love of my wife in three weeks. So it turned out okay. It hurt like hell. The hardest decision I had to make at the time. And he went to start drinking. Um. Hmm. Well, anyway, I don't know if I like these people's letters. My cousin helped me pick some of them, and I'm like not feeling this group. So let's move on. This article is called 12 People Who Jilted them, Their Partners at the Altar, and they tell why they did it. This person says because the relationship was toxic. Another says the couple had they had different expectations for the marriage because the groom was cheating. Not just that, but serial cheating because the bride was cheating. Because of an important realization that there's no single right reason to get married, but there are wrong reasons, and being more interested in marriage in general than marriage with that specific person is one of them. It's like, you know, I just wanted to marry somebody, anybody, not a special somebody 
at least she realized it so she broke it off and then this one one found out that they broke up because the groom was already married of course he couldn't show up bigamist another guy says he doesn't really know why he didn't he didn't want to show up he just didn't want to and he so he didn't i don't know i'm just like i don't understand it all right here's some more this lady says my fiance laughed in my face when the pastor asked if he would take me to be his wife he humiliated me in front of my whole family and his i'm currently in a custody battle for our son this one in my case he started behaving differently until i started to question why we were together then on the day that we would have gotten married he didn't show up my fiance left me three days before our wedding because he decided he wasn't married. I mean, ready. He married someone else three months later. My man cheated on me and, and I lost all my money on the wedding that never happened. I got a note from my fiance saying how sad he was to do this to me, but that I should take my best friend on our honeymoon. My fiance ran off with someone else a month before our wedding. I was completely blindsided. Wow, these dudes are a piece of work. I just found out the real reason my fiance left me after seven years together. His mother gave him an ultimatum, your fiance or your family. We were looking at wedding venues and I realized that I wasn't ready to get married. And then this one says, my fiance left when I was four months pregnant, two months before our wedding. Today I'm happily married to a wonderful man who treats me and my son very well. The end of the story is of people who was in it only for the green card. The guy who never really proposed, they just kind of drifted into it. Okay, these are a lot of reasons that, you know, I'm going to be going over in a minute. What I think are 14 reasons why you should call off an engagement but you don't wait till the last minute okay that's stupid you don't need to do that you want to you want to call it off like a g you know and ideally if you have learned anything from listening to my lectures you wouldn't have properly vetted the dude that you you know we're going to call yourself being engaged to and you would know the difference between somebody who was the right man for you to marry who's on the same page you wouldn't know it by how he acts there wouldn't be hesitation and doubts uh, you don't have to chase him. You don't have to ask him. You don't have to beg for his time, intention, or involvement. I mean, he's there because he wants to be there more than he wants to be anywhere else. If you have a man who has any doubts or he's hesitating, he corner cutting and dodging and dipping and twisting and acting a fool, that's not somebody that you marry. You don't push, apart, push ahead for the wedding, and I think that's a mistake that a lot of brides to be made. They stay focused on the end goal, which is the wedding, instead of being focused on the marriage. Okay, so let's talk about that. Well, yeah, they, they, I mean, they might very well be losers. I don't know. But I think the problem I think I'm having with this so much, not that they didn't, you know, make it the way that they handled themselves. It's very immature and, you know, just silly. I mean, just think, like, you know, that's why I gave you all those numbers thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars lost i mean in this economy who got that kind of money to just toss away because if that wedding venue can't rebook that spot they they keeping your money you know at the last minute i mean they just they can't sell the facility to anyone else so what are they going to do that's unfair to them why should that business have to suffer because you know y'all can't get your shit together okay so this is you know deb's list of 14 reasons why i think that are, are perfectly logical reasonable and some very solid reasons i'm sure you guys you know in the chat room can think of some more because you guys usually augment what i say very well but um you know you marrying somebody I mean, it's like tying your wagon to somebody you know ideally in our imagination it's for life I mean, that's a heavy, heavy, heavy thing. You better be damn sure what you're doing and not have any doubts whatsoever that this is the right person. So let's talk about some of these red flags 
that might mean i mean it doesn't mean that you can't marry the person eventually but it definitely means that you don't need to marry them now until these issues are resolved okay so let me put that little caveat in there because i don't want people saying you don't want me I'm just, you just always talking negative you don't want nobody to get married you just be talking so much shit about marriage okay uh you know i just want to just address that now before they start going crazy i'm not saying that i'm saying don't marry this motherfucker okay or don't marry this motherfucker right now that's what i'm saying you need to work on you know figure out if y'all can work these issues out because just saying i do is not gonna fix them that's what i'm saying okay but you know you want to get married to some fool that's on you i don't i won't be the one sitting there crying about it that's gonna be you all right so number one i should number these why didn't i number these okay number one you're feeling pressured to get married you feeling pressured now um we're not talking about getting pressured. Like what they used to call them, shotgun weddings when a woman pregnant and her daddy showed with a shotgun and forced the groom to marry because they wasn't having an illegitimate childbirth stuff. Well, those days are over. So it's not that kind of force. But you got to feel some pressure. Like, say, your parents. In certain cultures, the parents expect these kids to get married and provide them with grandchildren to keep the family lineage going. It's like a cultural thing. So by the time these people get in their late 20s or, you know, early 30s, the parents is going to be on them like white on rice. Why is you married? Why is you married? When you married? Where your wife at? Where my grandkids at? Why are you waiting? Why are you waiting? Where you get married? When you Let's introduce you to somebody. They be setting them up on blind dates, all kinds of stuff. Because they, this is an important cultural thing. Marriage is an ingrained part of the culture it's expected and so those people might feel a lot of pressure you might also feel a lot of pressure if you're you know an, an active church person you know they're gonna you know you single you young they know you horny as hell so they're gonna say well you need to get married because you're not supposed to be fornicating and you don't need to be having no damn babies out of wedlock that's you know against the religion so let's get you married to somebody so that at least when you fucking and having a baby it's under the guise of marriage and so it's legitimized right so, you know, you might feel that kind of pressure. You might feel pressure because, um, you know, you're seeing somebody and people, you have kid, maybe you have a kid or something you had with this person, and people are like, well, what are you guys waiting for? You know, you're living like a married couple. Why don't you get married? You buy a house, you buy a dog. You go on vacation together. You have a kid together. What's the problem? Why aren't you getting married? So, you know, people start laying this pressure on you and um a lot of people just kind of succumb to it not really being sure that marriage is what they want but they feel they kind of have the well, why not kind of attitude okay so that's one reason why i i don't think you should move forward with a wedding just because of that don't, don't do that number two you talking yourself into into the whole situation you talking this into this person being the right person for you now you know this is the women who's like you know this man got some drama and some issues but you like well it'll be better after we get married well you know it's, it's not that big of a deal you know he's his good points more than outweigh his bad points oh i can deal with it you know i'll be his wife it won't be that serious you know once we're married to stand. okay so you're thinking that um you know, you can talk yourself into this person working out. Your your standards are too high. You need to adjust them and settle a little bit. Well, yeah, he may be not as cute as you want, but, you know, these kind of things, those are when you're talking yourself into a situation. You know, you not not really feeling the dude. You're not really feeling marrying the dude. But you feel like, again, this is another well, why not situation. Number three, fear. This is a big one. This was in a, evident in a letter that we did just on Tuesday night where a woman was having a husband in his 50s who didn't want to work, had worked for four and a half years and owed like, you know, a zillion dollars in back child support for his four kids from his four baby mamas. And uh, so she did, they did get married, but her fear was, you know, leaving him and starting over at 40, whatever age she was, because... You know, so she felt like she just may as well just stay married. She was afraid of being, you know, by herself. Now, so sometimes people fear that, you know, they they need to get married because this person's here and they're getting older. Uh, they fear like, well, if I don't get married and have a kid now, 
um, you know, I'm going to be too old, my eggs will be too old, you know, or I'm going to miss that window of opportunity, I'll never be able to be a mama, I'll never be able to be a wife, and so they want to, you know, that's important to them, so they marry, you know, like the first train smoking. Um, yeah, that's pretty much sums up all these words I used. I don't feel like reading all of this stuff. Okay, and the fourth reason, you don't want to be left behind, so you settle. Now, what does that mean? That's different than fear, because it's not fear that's motivating you. It's, you know, wanting to keep up with the Joneses kind of thing. So you have, you know, a situation where all your friends are getting married. Your friends from college are getting married one by one, one by one. You, your sorors are getting married. Your, even your ratchet cousin with a white gap in her tooth and tats everywhere is getting married. So you sitting up there like, okay, well, I'm decent looking. I got a good job in the education. You know, I'm clean. I got my own shit working here. I travel. I read books. I'm smart. I'm cute and I'm funny. Why can't I find somebody to marry me? So then here comes Johnny Woo Woo. And you decide that you, Johnny Woo Woo, is going to be your husband because, you know, you want to be married too because you want to fit in with all those friends that you got. See, that's what I'm saying. This isn't fear. This is a different one. This is not fear that's motivating you. It's a desire to be like everyone else. It's a different, different motivator. You know, he's okay and he'll do. And so, you know, you marry him just so you'll fit him in the crowd because it feels awkward to you to be around all your married friends and you're the only one that's single. It bothers you. So you want to be in the part of that club. So you marry the first thing that will, you know, will accept you. Okay, I don't think that's a good idea. But, you know, that's sometimes that's the journey that you have to take before you wake up and realize that you made a gross error in judgment. Number five, there's deep down inside, there's a part of you that wants to call it off. That deep, dark part of you, you know this is some secretive bullshit that you're ignoring and you're not really paying attention to the fact that this is not going to work out. You know it's not going to work out. But you're willing to take that chance anyway because you want to keep hope alive. Now, you know, I remember reading this um, this poll some years ago. I think I talked about it on a video, as a matter of fact, uh, of how many women knew before they married the guy that he was the wrong dude they sh that they should have married. I could swear it's in a video on here, but um, I, I don't remember. It's too many videos at this point. I can't remember. But... Um, you know, isn't that kind of amazing? You know it's wrong, and you know it's shouldn't, something you shouldn't be doing, but you're doing it anyway. Why is that? That I don't understand. Um, and I have to confess, you know, even though I love my husband to death, before, you know, we was going to do this aisle-walking thing, my oldest brother came in there, and he's like, oh, you know, you look so pretty. And I'm like, yeah. And I was looking out the window, right? It was these big picture windows. And I was ready to break through that window like my ass was like <laughs> Supergirl or something. And just go like run, run it down the street. Of course, this was, you know, before the runaway bride came out. But I would have been the first one. And it wasn't like I didn't want to be with him. But it was like, you know, that whole thing looming over my head of, the weight of being a wife, the expectations, the drudgery, the, you know, the contractual obligations of society. You know, even though I was young, I was still able to discern that maybe that really wasn't what I wanted to do. And uh, that was hard for me. That was very hard. And so I, you know, as I was reading these stories about people who ditched and bailed, I could identify with them. I mean, I'm not saying it's the best thing to do because of some of the reasons. It's just disrespectful, you know. And Plus, yeah, it's disrespectful to, to you, your guests, your bridesmaid, your family. I mean, it's just really a horrible way to do things. But I understand, as Chris Rock says. <laughs> I understand because I was there, I'm telling you. I was ready to break free like Kuta Kente and just run. But... I, my brother talked me out of it, and so there you go. And it was good. It was fine. But uh, in the moments, 
I was ready to <laughs> I was ready to break out like Flojo. All right, so let's talk about the next one. Number five. Okay, number six. You want kids and he doesn't. Or even vice versa. This is a big one. I get a lot of advice letters from this. You know, people, they be trying to convince the other person. And sometimes the women want to turn up and be accidentally pregnant to try to force the issue. Bonehead move. Just be a woman about your shit. So you with a man, you love him and everything, but in your mind, if this is sort of a life goal for you, you want to be somebody's mama. That's something that you've always dreamed of. It's a part of who you are. It's a part of the life choices that you want to make. And you're with a man that you love and you want to marry, but he don't want no kids. So what do you do? You don't marry him. That's what you do. You don't marry him. Because what would that mean? You would have to give a huge sacrifice. Your life dream would go up in smoke. And you, but even if, you know, the situation with him doesn't last and you do find somebody else, who's to say that you wouldn't have reached that point where your your window opportunity is closed and now you're too old? You know, you risk all these birth defects and all this stuff if you even could get pregnant because you're having all these, you know, fertility problems. And so it's, it's a very thing, you know, you have to be selfish sometimes and think about yourself. So if you, seriously, if that's something that you really want, you really want to be a mama, then you have to make that goal your priority and get with a man who wants to be a daddy, okay? And if you two love each other and you got that same life goal, raising a family is something that's very important to you, family is important to both of you, then you're, then you're with somebody who's compatible. But if you're with somebody who just wants to, you know, play around and just pick up and go and whenever they want to with no obligations of a child, that's not your mate. That's not the one for you. You should break up that engagement. Number seven. There's a controlling or abusive behavior in the relationship. Now, you would think that this would be kind of basic and that women would already know this. But, you know, you got somebody who's, like, trying to tell you what to do, where you can go, what you can wear, who can be your friends, monitoring your behavior. You can't wear your hair like that. Take some of that makeup off. I don't like you being with friends with those people. Be home at this time here, blah, blah, blah. And you want to marry that? That would be a mistake. Okay, you would feel like a caged bird with a broken wing and be miserable. That's not the man to marry. You want a man who's going to gonna enrich your life and make your life better and bring you joy and help you become the woman that you should be. Not somebody who's going to try to, like, clip your wings so he can keep you in a cage. You don't do that. All right? Let's talk about number eight. We're going over, in case you just got here, the 14 reasons that I think that you should abandon an engagement because they're the very valid reasons not to marry somebody, even if you do love them, even if you are engaged to them. Sometimes the shit just don't make no damn sense. You know, you shouldn't have accepted the ring, but you did. But you now you're realizing what you did. It was a mistake. But some of you want to go through it anyway, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But let me finish this up. So 14 reasons I think are very valid reasons why you should not marry somebody. Okay, so number eight, your mate has any kind of addictions. Okay, dependency issues or addictions. Oof, you would think people would know that. Okay, how you going to marry a crackhead? Somebody who's a porn addict, a sex addict, who smokes weed all the time. How are you going to do that? A drunk? You know, what What are you doing? What are you doing? Whatever that addiction is, that's his bitch. Okay? That's who he is in love with. It ain't you. So you're going to be constantly thinking you're going to be getting his attention and you're going to want to, and it's going to be better after we get married because he said he going to go to treatment and he said it's going to be better. He going to try and all Okay, y'all just, well, I don't know, you just, the, the addict right along with him, smoking the same shit he is because you're delirious. He's going to be the man that he is right now. You're marrying that man, okay? You can't expect him to be anything other than what he is right now, all right? You can't do that. You know, drugs, alcohol, sex, oh, gambling. Gambling, your, your house will be stripped bare. You won't have shit in your house because he will gamble everything away. And whatever, you know, he can't, the money, then he's going to start selling shit. All right, the next one. 
you want the wedding, but not so much the marriage. And I found out about this. I was in high school, right? And I met this. I used to babysit for this lady. She had two kids I used to babysit for. And uh, she married this skinny, scrawny, funny-looking white dude. And I'm like, he wasn't even cute. I Well, she said he had, he was, you know, slaying, but whatever. So I went over there, and I'm looking at him, and I'm looking at her. I said, why you get married to him? And her response to me was, girl, for a party. That's exactly what she said to me, for a party. So that kind of, that's why this is on this list, because, you know, you want the wedding, which is like, you know, it's a big thing. I mean, it's like you're princess of a day, and you get to be a bridezilla, and all these people give you presents and tell you how beautiful you are. I mean, it's, you know, pretty heady stuff. And so a lot of women look forward to that. It means maybe only that one day, but all the fanfare and the excitement leading up to it, you know, all the attention they get, the parties, the bridal showers, you know, people want to see your ring and all this. You take the pictures, it's in the newspaper. I mean, you know, it's a lot of attention and a lot of women look for that. That's like they one time to get it. And so they love all that stuff, but they're not really paying too much attention to the part that follows, which is the marriage. They just want the party. They want the wedding. But if that's your focus, I mean, be realistic with yourself. Be realistic. If that's what you want, then throw your ass a party. Don't be involving other people in it. And don't, especially don't be, you know, trying to like involve a groom who might not understand that that's what he's there for. Um, number 10. Some people just kind of drift into marriage. It's like the next item on the checklist since you've been together so long and everything. There's no real enthusiasm. Sometimes the dude doesn't even really propose. It's just that you all just say, well, you know, we should get married. And then he's like, oh, okay. And then, you know, he realizes at the end that, well, I didn't really want to marry her. You know, well, how did this happen? I'm like, I'm out, deuces. And then he, you know, he throws up the deuces and, and breaks out. And then you sit up there telling him, but I thought you loved me. We were going to get married. We were going to live happily ever after. And he's like, I was I was fine just living with you. Why are you doing this to me? All right. Number um, 11, you have the kind of relationship where you break up and make up all the damn time. Shouldn't I tell you that this is not stable enough to be any kind of marriage? Number 12, you have some major secret that you know if you expose it and told the person and were honest with the person that you dealing with that they might not want to marry you. Okay, so you live in a lie. You hiding shit. And you're manipulating and coerce, coercing, coercing them into a marriage that they probably wouldn't be in if they knew the real truth. That's some foul shit. But I know people who did that. And sometimes it's something like, oh, well, you know, he's married. And he's going to lie all the way up to the wedding day and then bail, dip out, because he knows he can't marry the second person. Or... Uh, he got some other broad pregnant that he didn't tell you, and now you married, and now you're going to be having to deal with her. I mean, all kinds of people do all kinds of sh They got $200,000 in debt. They are about to go off to jail. I mean, all kinds of stuff that they don't want to tell you, and you find out after you're married to them. Or remember the women who the men, they got married, and the men told them that they was bi. Same thing. See, they keep huge secrets from you but I'm, I'm saying as an adult be honest if you have a secret like that that you know would impact somebody's life and their choices and you're intentionally hiding it from them to, to manipulate them into marrying you that's some foul shit that's super foul and when they find out and they divorce your ass don't say nothing because you could have been honest all right number 13 we almost finished i only had 14 you're in the early stages of lust and infatuation, and you don't really know who this person is. These are people that, you know, they meet the person, oh, my God, I'm in love, after two weeks. And they tell their parents after three weeks they met the one, and then they engage in four weeks and married after three months. Okay, you caught up in that whirlwind, that lust thing, that, you know, this is the one thing. You don't really know who this person is. And that's what a lot of women get scammed like that because they marry dudes that are, like, shysty. You know, and then they do be taking all their money and stuff. And or they, they may find he's married to some women in other countries. I mean, all kind of bullshit. Y'all need to take your time with this. And then the last one is that you see marriage as your way out of a situation. This is a big umbrella. Sometimes for really young women, they want to escape their parents. They're in a very controlling household where they can't really leave unless they're married, you know, for religious purposes or whatever, or they're broke. 
and they need two incomes in their house and so marriage is a way to you know up their lifestyle or um i don't know whatever whatever is the thing you know that you're trying to escape from or you need to be rescued from uh marriage you feel and this man in marriage or marriage to injure anybody is going to alleviate that problem i think that's the issue with a lot of foreign brides you know they just want to get married to just anybody and it doesn't matter who it is they want to be married to somebody if he says he's bi you say bye <laughs> i think so too i mean to me that's like a that would be like a non-issue Okay, so why would people, okay, we talked about the why reasons why people call it up. Do you know there also there's some legal issues that you might be facing if you dip out? Because they can sue you for, you know, sort of the money that they lost. They can sue you. Um, you know, there's like, you know, the clauses that, you know, emotional abandonment and all these different things. I mean, that varies from state to state, you know, country to country, those kind of clauses. But in some, you know, they have that. And so, you know, somebody does something that damages you emotionally like that, public humiliation, all the stuff. I mean, they could sue you for that. Is that really what you want? Because whatever time and money you feel like you saved, you're getting ready to just give it up in a court, you know, a settlement. There's also the issue of, you know, what who, who, who gets custody of the engagement ring? You know, some women just give it back. Others be like, no, you gave it to me, it's mine. It's you know worth five, ten, twenty thousand dollars. I'm keeping it. And what does what you as to do? What you gonna do? You gonna try to pull an OJ and break in there and get it? I mean, what? What you gonna do? You did give it to her, and she is out a lot of money. So maybe you should just give it to her and just shut up. You know. So and then plus you know the other legal issues you know vary from state to state. So that's something I can't really um, comment on. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's going to be so many finer nuances of breach of contract. I mean, and all of this is going to vary from region to region, so I can't really say there's any one flat way to do it. But I just do want those who are thinking about doing the dip at the last minute that you could be on the hook for some, you know, for some dollars because of a legal settlement. Um, now, how do you call off your engagement... Oh, no, this is what I wanted. I wanted to go over some more reasons that um, men gave for dipping out. This guy says she just wasn't it. It sucked to realize this at the final hour, but right before it was time for the ceremony to start, I just got hit with a wave of realization that the person I was about to marry was not the right person for me. She just wasn't it. I was settling. Weddings are expensive, I know that, but the divorce would be more expensive. It took me 15 minutes to realize this, and then I ran out of that place, and we never spoke again. And he was 32. That's a little older, you know what I mean? But he realized that, and he just de -jetted. Number two, I was seeing somebody else. I had this woman who was my bride's cousin. Wow. Up at a hotel. I don't know why I did that. You know, she got caught kissing her. The cousin said I had to tell the bride or she would. I declined and just decided to leave and not get married. I'm not even talking to either girl anymore, so now I'm back to square one. And I wanted to say that, too. Sometimes, you know, people have these, these things where they don't tell you they don't want to get married. They act out very stupidly and... uh you know, this kind of behavior is a way to do it. They want to, you know, just alert. They want you to be the bad guy, rather. They want you to break up with them for cheating or whatever versus them just being a man and saying, you know, I just don't want this. I'm not. I just say, this ain't me. I'm not there right now. I'm not ready for this. Okay, so watch for that. If you are engaging and your dude starts tipping around with some other woman, you might want to put the brakes on the wedding plans because he's sending you a very clear message. All right, and this dude was 29. Okay, this guy's 30, and he says, her dad talked me out of it. The morning of the wedding, I was getting with my groomsmen and her dad and her dad. Her dad sat me down and gave me one of those stern talks about how he would come after me if I ever did anything wrong to his daughter. He made me feel so threatened and nervous that I freaked out. 
I blame him for taking for talking me out of getting married. I didn't end up marrying her that day or ever. Wow. I wonder if she ever found out why. That would be so fucked up. I think, you know, if I really loved my daddy, I would be hot as hell. This guy says he wasn't ready to be wifed up. <laughs> I just realized and thinking about it, sitting down, that married life was not for me. He was only 24, though. So, yeah, I guess it wasn't. Men should never get married until they in their mid, you know, early to mid-30s. This guy says that we got into a heated fight right before the ceremony. She got mad at me because she found out I lied about something. It was stupid, but it, I did lie. She was screaming, calling me a liar. I just couldn't take it. And I realized if this is how our wedding day is going to go, then our life together will be a total mess. I decided to tap out and end the whole relationship. Now, in this situation, again, an egregious behavior right before the way to make her be the bad guy he thinks he's slick well she was screaming and calling me a liar because you are one you admitted that you were a liar so why you get mad because she called you a liar you see what i mean he did that shit on purpose and he's like i tapped out he didn't want to marry her coward this guy says i was stuck in traffic i didn't mean to stand up at the altar i swear to that i got stuck in traffic i tried calling her but she didn't answer everyone else thought i was lying Nobody believed me when I showed up an hour late. Everybody thought I was being sketchy. We did end up getting married two years later, but we had a lot of trust issues to deal with before that. Wow. This is the letter I was talking about, about the money. How you guys are spending all that money on a wedding. It might impact the fact that your dude decides he's going to tap out before you tap out his wallet. He says, I didn't want a huge wedding, and I didn't want to spend $20,000 of our money to help pay for it. Her parents were spending over $50,000 already. So this we're talking about a $70,000 wedding. The whole thing bothered me. In the end, we had very different views when it comes to finances, and that alone was not easy for us to deal with. She was a spender, and I was a saver. See, fundamental lifestyle differences in philosophy about money and kids that will fuck you up. Do not ever marry a man you ain't on the same page with, at least on them two issues, and plus sex. On the wedding day, I saw that she had got us in debt for another $10,000. I flipped out, and then I walked out. He's only 29, and he's going to be in all that debt? No, bitch, pay this shit by your damn self. No. Um... This guy says, weddings are a great way to see if your families will blend, and ours clearly did not. There were physical fights between our family members before the ceremony even started. By the time I finished dealing with that, I had enough and decided to just end the whole thing and not get married. This guy says, I didn't have a reason. I don't know why I didn't want to get married. I just woke up on my wedding day and just never got out to bed. I felt depressed that I didn't have the energy to go get married. Love is complicated. I wish I had a better answer. So, you know, I'm looking at that. And so, you know, I, I want to caution you ladies who, yes, all that all that shit for one day. Well, plus, I mean, depending on which one of the statistics, some of them included honeymoon and others did not. But, you know, you're looking at another five grand for honeymoon. So it's a lot, a lot, a lot of money. I mean, why spend seventy eighty thousand eighty thousand dollars on a wedding, she just, you, that's like half a house in some normal state, not California, because that's just a deposit, down payment, whatever they call it. But, um, you know, I mean, that's half the house. I mean, you got like a tiny mortgage in most places if you pay $80,000 and put that money down on your house. I mean, why can't you just have like a simple marriage, a little simple ceremony? I don't know. So if you have to, you know, you realize that your situation is raggedy and you are not going to get married, you feel like this is not the person. Is there a way to do it the correct way? You know, how do you do it in, in a way that makes sense, that's respectful, that's mature, that's responsible? Like I said, I think it all begins with making a good choice in the beginning. You know, before you accept a man's ring, ladies, you've got to be tighter with, you know, your standards. And does he meet them? Does he meet them consistently? And does he meet them all? 
And if you have any doubts, if there's any kind of flakiness, half stepping, not quite where you got to squint and look at it kind of at an angle and all that stuff to try to make make it fit, then there's a problem there. And uh, you need to pay attention to it. It's not to say you can't marry the guy later, like I said. But it's obviously right now it should be off the table. So this article, where did I find this? This was in the Washington Post. And it's called How to Break Off Your Engagement and Cancel Your Wedding the Right Way. So I'm like, wow, even the Washington Post is talking about this. You know what I mean? It's like this is this is a lot because, I mean, then I you know, found the statistics like I started off at the top of the show. 20% or more of all engagements don't work. They end, they, the people don't get married. You know, they, it just doesn't happen for them. And then you think about all the celebrity you know, I was looking at, you know, a lot of the couples that don't um, get married. Uh, I remember Carol, Kelly Rowland was in date. was dating somebody. And Britney Spears was engaged to somebody. And uh, Jude Law, he has been, been engaged to a couple of folks. Remember, he got caught in that fucking the nanny scandal. And the woman he was engaged to said, oh, no, screw you. I mean, just all kind of people. I mean, these are celebrities. I remember Brad Pitt and... And uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, they didn't make it to the to get married. And J Lo, her ass, but she has so many like engagement rings. It's not even funny. That girl, you know, Ben Affleck was devastated after she he gave her that gigantic ass ring, and she was like, "No, thank you," and didn't marry him. Didn't marry Puffy either. So I mean, these are just a few of the names that come to mind. I mean, there's like dozens and dozens of them, but um. You know, and then you add that to just the regular people. That's a lot of folks that get engaged and it just never happens. So, you know, what what is it about being engaged that people chase after and then realize after the fact that it's not going to work? I don't I don't know that part. So if you all have a have an idea, I'm all ears. Um, OK, so according to uh, the Washington Post. What you should do if you break your engagement in this order, this is the order they have it in in the article, you get the word out to people. You know, I would imagine the telephone trees and social media are probably a good way to do that. These days, everyone will see it pretty quickly. You know, you send out your emails, you know. Some people have these, like, wedding website things, you know, on these web like a portal. They have, like, a website where they had engagement pictures and pictures of a venue and all this kind of stuff, right? And so everybody can follow along with their wedding plans with them. Well, you could post it on there and say, well, the wedding's been canceled, you know. So people know we'll be returning, returning all gifts. Whatever you're going to say, you know, you want to get the word out according to them. Okay, the second thing, oh, yeah, okay, what to do with any gifts you have received. Typical etiquette says that the couple should return any engagement shower or wedding gifts they received, even if they were personalized. But if the guests insist that the couple keep the gifts, then you should do so. It's like, okay, I got you some shit engraved with your name. Well, what, unless we got the same name, what the fuck I'm going to do with it? You just scam me out of something. Don't ask me for shit else. <laughs> this is good. Every time you talk about something, I'll be like, well, remember that wedding gift I got you that you didn't get married for? There you go. That's, that's going to be re-gifted to you so many times. It's not going to be funny. But, you know, no. Okay, what about the engagement ring, they say? Typically, whoever proposed should get the ring returned to them, especially if the ring was a family heirloom. I agree with that part. Receiving an engagement ring essentially agreeing to a con contract that you will marry the person who has given it to you. This is from an attorney. However, there are exceptions. Hmm. He re this attorney recalls a situation she worked on that when a man proposed to a woman while he was still married. When you ask a person to marry you and you're not capable of fulfilling the contract, she doesn't have to give the ring back. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. Ch canceling on wedding vendors. Unfortunately, wedding cancellation insurance usually covers things such as cancellation or postponement due to weather or death or illness, but not a change of heart. I have never heard of wedding cancellation insurance. I didn't know such a thing existed. Yeah, well, David's bridal was going out of business because their dresses was ugly as fuck. My cousin, when we went there with her, the one in Vacaville, I think it was a Sacramento or somewhere, 
and looked at them little hideous dresses and it was like oh my god are you kidding me right now they were just they know whoever their buyer was 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 sad that's why they going out of business um the big day that's now just a normal day after the work of canceling a wedding the emotional toll can set in uh so, you know, try to be happy and the digital remains. Everyone we spoke to noted how the digital footprint lingered long after the breakup. It took months before this woman realized that her wedding website was still live with the ticker still counting down. Oh, my goodness. They had to purchase four different URLs for their wedding website. And even if she stopped paying for them, she would get emails from GoDaddy and let her know that one of the URLs was still available. <laughs> she said it was like it was haunting me. Oh, my God, poor thing. So, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's uh, kind of interesting. What are some other reasons that you might want to cancel your, your uh, engagement? What about if the sex is whack? I don't understand how you could have got engaged if that, for that, but that might be another reason. Um, you want them to change, like I touched on that, but. I didn't use those exact words. Or you keep putting off on setting a date. You engage. But, you know, this happens a lot with the women. They want to set a date. And the dude keeps like, why are you pressing me? You rushing me. I don't want to set a date. This and that. You know what? Rather than you worrying about that, you should give him that little raggedy-ass ring back and tell him, well, I can see that you don't really want to do this. You gave me what, what Deb calls a shut-up ring. And trust me, that's what that is. If you got a man who gives you a ring and he proposes, but then he don't want to set a date to actually make it happen, he always got a bunch of bullshit-ass excuses, that's somebody who doesn't want to marry you versus you trying to wheedle and wind him into it. Just give him his ring back because that's what that is. Yes, she did. She got a man who she leveled up big time. Um, and then, of course, if you go intuition... A lot of women ignore their intuition. Something that'll tell that little nagging voice inside will tell you that's not right, that there's something wrong. Please pay attention to it, because otherwise you will be in a situation where you pushing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward, and then the next thing you know, you know, you stand up there at the altar all by yourself, and that just won't be a good experience for you. All right, let me look through it. What do I have here? All kind of stuff. Some more stories about grooms who jilted their bride and they confess why they did it. Hmm. Oh, let's see. This guy says, I left my ex fiance a month before the wedding. She wanted to go to a jewelry store to look at engagement rings. I wanted, I was expecting to walk out of there with one, but we did. The salesperson even took a just engaged Polaroid picture. She became more and more controlling, and I couldn't take it anymore after I left her. Her friend texted me the next day of the support, of supposed ceremony telling me that the cake was delicious. This guy says all she cared about was the wedding. My brother left his fiance a week before the wedding. Basically, as soon as he proposed, all she cared about was the wedding. He wanted a very small wedding. She wanted a big one. She was also very religious. Her father's a preacher, and he was not at all. She told him that she wanted to become a deacon in her father's church, and he told her no, he didn't want her to do that. Pretty much, they were disagreeing on everything. Finally, he called it off. He said it was the hardest thing he's ever had to do, but he knew he made the right choice. Okay, my thing is this. See, you're not religious. And you know her daddy's a preacher. Why did you propose to her? And better yet for her, why did you say yes? It's fine to date somebody, you know what I mean? But if you're going to get married and your religion is important to you and that person doesn't share your religion and they're not tolerant of your religion, which he you know, was exposed by him not wanting her to move forward with this deaconess thing, then that tells you right there that you two are not compatible. So I don't know what, um, you know, what, what, what he was expecting or what she was expecting. This guy says, um, 
he bailed two days before we were headed to City Hall to get married. It was a green card marriage. On our second date, she mentioned that her visa was expiring six months, and I jokingly proposed to her. The proposal became more real as the deadline approached, but I backed out at the last minute because we didn't agree on some details. Living arrangements and finances were easy. What couldn't be negotiated was how seriously either one of us wanted to take these vows. I wanted to at least attempt to be a married monogamous couple. She didn't really want to commit to that. So she just wanted, you know, dude to be married to her in name only. And he, you know, he evidently really liked her. This guy, this woman says, um, I got left at the altar. He had spent the previous day spending a lot of time with his ex. Oh, instead of helping me set everything up. I yelled at him about it because he was late and hadn't helped at all. He said he didn't want to get married because spending time with his ex made him realize I wasn't as fun as she was because I was uncomfortable with him doing drugs. Remember what I said about you don't get engaged with somebody who's got at addiction issues and dependency issues? She says, I kicked him out and still had the party. I told him to use that time to go home and pack up all his shit. He did. Wow. So these are just, you know, some of the stories I collected. And if you want to read any, there's hundreds of thousands of them on the on the Internet. You can just pick some and just read them. Oh, I have a super chat. I'm sorry I missed it. Thank you. Oh, I have it over here on Google, on uh, YouTube. Let me see what this says here. This girl, Betty. And you know I'm going to the liquor store, too, after this show. I didn't drink anything on Tuesday. I was good after what the fuck Tuesday. But I did have to lay down because some people made me feel crazy. So, you know, it, it, I think, you know, to kind of wrap things up here, um, I wanted to share those stories of people. This is the reality that you face as a woman if you try to, you know, kind of push the envelope to get a guy you know quote to marry you when he's not really showing that kind of interest i'm not saying that you should be trying to make it happen either you know i'm not a believer in that auditioning to be a wife shit i'm not a, you know jumping through hoops to try to make them see you as wife material none i don't believe in any of that i'm just saying as a woman have your standards Express them clearly to the gentleman that you are involving yourself with or considering involving yourself with. And then three, sit back and watch. Watch, look, and listen. If you can do them three things, it will tell you any, everything that you need to know about this dude and whether he's right for you. You know, you don't have to be wasting years and years of your life dating somebody for seven eight ten years to figure out that this guy is not gonna work with you it's not you guys are on different pages in different books there's no need to even you know think like that but um you know so we had to go over some realities of how often this happens uh how much it costs how much money you're gonna be out of that's why your ass better be making sure that this is the dude and that he sees you as the, as the woman and you know then we, you know we didn't even get into the emotional devastation and you know how you have to come, how, what you have to do to come back from that i would imagine some women feel so upset i mean just think of the public humiliation you got a guest hundreds of guests there and you in the back room all dollied up with your gown on and stuff waiting for your daddy or uncle or whoever gonna walk you down the aisle to come and get you and then he come in and say well ain't no groom Dude bail. Dude said he ain't coming or something along those lines. You know, how how would you feel in a situation like that? So these are things, you know, you can learn from other people's mistakes and other people's experiences and so that you don't make those same mistakes. These women that are like proposing to men, did you know there's a whole bunch of these videos out lately? These women, all sisters, all down on their knees and proposing to these dudes and stuff. Dummies. These are the kind of women who are going to have the dudes, even if they do show up, they're half-assed their way through the wedding. You know, I mean, not the way, the marriage. You know, they don't really do shit. They're not really invested in it. And I can't think of anything sadder than a marriage between two people where only one of them is really into it and the other one's just like, whatever. You know, I guess, I, I guess it's okay. This is important. I have another super chat. 
Oh, well, thanks, you guys. Wow, everybody's just like, like coming through with the Super Chats tonight. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, this, you know, this is a tough topic. I just really, do you know, to tell you guys the truth, this was on deck for um, last month, for February. But I decided not to do it because my focus was going to be on bettering you. And this kind of took a detour. It's not about bettering yourself. It's about, um, you know, making a different kind of choice in, in a situation that's really far along from dating. So I focused, you know, on like dating and choosing a partner and knowing when the person's right for you and breaking up, moving on when they're not. You know, it was the beginning to mid stages of relationships. This is pretty much the end. This is like, you know, right before you get married and, uh, you know, you've done all the dating and all that, hopefully all the vetting and all the stuff that I talked about during February. That's why I didn't do it last month and just doing it today. But um, think, think about these kind of things, you know, as you start moving through life, especially you young ones, and you want to think about getting married, you have to understand, you know, get real clear on what marriage means to you. Not the wedding, marriage. What does being married mean to you? And when you meet a man, you got to be real clear on if this man is going to provide you with the things that you're looking for for marriage to provide i mean be honest with yourself take them stars out your eyes because you know you could have stars in your eyes and it might last i don't know a year or two you know what i mean but at some point the, that's gonna fall off and you're gonna see this motherfucker real clear with no stardust in your eyes and you're gonna be looking at him like what the fuck did i do who is you why are you here you are dumb I made a gross mistake. I don't want that to be you. I want you to put keep your thinking cap on. You know, keep your brain engaged. I mean, you could be all the love and flowers and romance you want to, but keep your brain engaged as you make these choices. This is important. And I think if people did that more often, they'd have less divorces. Might have more, you know, broken engagements, but there would be way less divorces. It's easier to get a broken engagement than it is to get a divorce, especially once you start involving children, okay? So um, I hope that this was some, you know, beneficial information, give you something to think about, put a little something on your mind as you, um, you know, you go through the rest of the week. I'm going to put up another video, uh, the, another blog talk video this weekend because uh, everybody seemed to really like those. So I don't have to get busy doing my little edits and everything. I'll pick a top one of the the titles and put it up so look for that if you are not a subscriber to this channel please become one and be sure to hit that bell symbol after you do because you know I'll put the, the video up but I may decide to do a live on Sunday I says I didn't do one last weekend I may decide to do a live but if I do it's gonna be a very sudden you know just sit down and start doing it type of thing and so be sure to become a subscriber so that when I start the video or put the schedule up you'll get a notification so you can come on and join in the chat and I usually do Sundays starting at 4 Pacific time, which is if you're on the East Coast, that's about 7. So, it, you know, it's usually in that time frame. So just so you can be on the lookout. What's she doing? What's she at? What's going on? Okay. But um, I have enjoyed sitting here talking to you guys about this. And like I said, I hope that it, you know, raises some, some questions in your mind and helps you kind of refocus your thoughts on this whole thing about marriage and who you should be marrying, and the cost, okay? Shit, invest in some properties, some income property or something. You say, got to spend all that money on one fucking day? You know? Oh, no. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm cheap. If I signed out of sew, I would make my dress. Giving my auntie, we used to make my other one, but shoot. But she was like a seamstress. That shit looked so pro, it was unbelievable. But, um, yeah, Sunday, like, you know, Sundays I'm usually, got, you know, relaxed and, you know, I don't really, all my chores are done, house is clean, you know, all that stuff. So I have time to um, to be creative and, you know, sit here and chill out with you guys. What I want to do is like, on one, I think once we have a holiday coming up at the end of of May, it's a holiday. I want to do a um, like a three or four hour thing that day. Probably would have to be a Google Hangout because I don't think you could do them that long on YouTube. I'm not sure. I don't really know. I'll investigate. But, you know, we could just talk and we could just have fun and tell jokes and talk about whatever you want to talk about for a long time. And it would be all good and people could come in and out, you know, you don't have to stay the whole time. 
And uh, I'm thinking of doing something like that, just, you know, for something new to do. But thank you guys for coming and talking about marriage and engagements and broken engagements and broken hearts. I hope that you take something valuable away from this and, you know, helps you guide you to make smarter choices. If you start looking at somebody being your husband, reflect back on this. Reflect back on this and give that motherfucker the side eye and then start looking at your wallet and counting your change and make sure that you don't overspend, okay? It's great. Love is great, but there's no need for you to become, you know, going to debt behind having a wedding to entertain a bunch of people that don't don't even give a fuck. It's just there for the party anyway. Anyway, Deb Cooper from SurvivingDating.com. Check me out. Become a subscriber to the Deathstrism channel. I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.